What's up everybody, I wanted to go ahead and bring to you guys my Arceus Binder Drop deck that I've been whipping up over the past couple days. I wanted to go ahead and make a deck that kind of was an anti-meta Arceus deck, kind of counter the meta with weakness, and have a really, really good matchup against Lost Box. We'll get into the deck profile, and then afterwards we'll get into a few talking points that I don't cover in the deck profile. So, to start things off, we have ourselves the Arceus V and V-Star. We're playing that at a 4-3 line. Arceus V-Star having an attack for 3 colorless energy and allows you to get 3 basic energy from your deck to your Pokemon V in any way you like. And that does 200 damage. And then having the V-Star ability to add 2 cards from your deck and then you can just pretty much have whatever you need whenever you need it with this card. So then next we've got ourselves a Flying Pikachu VMAX. And now Flying Pikachu VMAX is a attacker that I decided to go with because it does 160 damage for one colorless, or two colorless and one lightning. And the effect of the attack being able to stop your opponent from being able to damage it with basic Pokemon just walls Lost Box. That's kind of the main reason that it's in here, but a secondary reason is that if you are going up against Lugia, it does hit your Lugia for weakness, and then also it does have a free retreat on both the V and the VMAX, so at all times it is just a pivot for you if something were to get knocked out. Next we've got the, one, and that was at a 2-2 line for the Flying Pikachu V and VMAX, we are also playing 2-2 line of Umbreon V and V Max. The reason why we're playing this is because for one darkness and two colors, so it does 160 damage, and it hits your Mew, Gardevoir, and Mewtwo V Union for weakness, allowing you to really just Oko and punish your opponent for having Psychics in play. And also, it's a boss's orders on legs. Its ability being a free gust, meaning that you can essentially turn an adventurer's discovery into a gust, which is pretty good in my opinion. Next, we've got the 1-1 one, one line of the Espeon VMAX. Espeon VMAX for 1 Psychic 2 Colorless allows you to do 60 damage times the amount of energy attached to all of your opponent's Pokemon, which that attack doesn't come up too often, and also the fact that it is a psychic does not come up too often but there are times where it can come up and i will get to that momentarily the last attacker that we are playing is the one of galarian zapdos v this is for the arceus matchups and also the maridon matchups because you hit both of them for weakness or well, at least you hit the maridon for weakness and also the arceus for weakness but you won't hit say uh giratina for weakness unfortunately but also the reason why it's good is it's one retreat which can be you know important in some cases and it has an ability that for each pokemon v your opponent has in play this attack costs one colorless less meaning that if your opponent puts three pokemon in v in play this becomes a one fighting energy attacker does 170 and removes a special energy from your opponent's Pokemon and it sends it to the discard pile, which is also pretty useful. The last Pokemon that we are playing is a 2 2 line of Babarel to always give us that draw and keep our hand at five cards. Next, we've got the trainer cards, which for the trainers, I decided to go with your three professors research three judge and two adventures discovery now these are just more of the consistency supporters and the last supporters that i play to round it off is a one of roxanne one of boss's orders and a one of sharon's care sharon's care there for the lost box matchup mainly and also or not for the lost box matchup but just kind of just to remove that damage if your opponent whiffs the oko and also just for certain situations it can come up your Roxanne is obviously if your opponent gets too ahead and then 
your boss's orders is only at one because of the fact that we play Umbreon and Umbreon is essentially boss's orders. For the search cards we are playing four of Ultra Ball and three of Nest Ball. And then beyond that we are also playing three Lost City for a counter stadium, two Choice Belt for the attack buff against the V's, Leafy Camo Poncho to kind of help stop our opponent from just boss KOing a V Star or a V Max that we haven't played that has been damaged already. Or also in the Lost Box matchup, being able to keep your opponent from being able to boss up the S Beyond V Max is also pretty good. The last two cards we're playing for trainers is a one of Escape Rope and a one of Switch, just to be able to have us a little bit of pivot and get around those unfortunate starts where we don't start with an Arceus V in hand. And lastly, we have the energy. The energy is going to be four double turbo energy, three lightning, three darkness, one psychic, and a fighting energy. Now, that's it for the 60 card list. Let's go ahead and get into some talking points. And then we can go ahead and get into a game. So... The main talking points of this deck is, I'll go ahead and share the record that I have so far throughout the testing that I've done. I'm currently 3-1 against Lost Box Turbo, 1-1 against Lugia, one colorless build was a loss, and the one single strike build was a win. I am 2-0 against Maridon, 2-1 against Mew, the one loss was due to unfortunate prizing where I prized both Umbreon V. Uh, I am 1-0 against Gardevoir, and I am 1-1 against Arctina, and I believe that I just kind of won the Arctina game that I did win at the time just due to uh, my opponent just not having the greatest of starts, and that kind of leads me into the problem of the deck is that it counters all of these decks except for Arctina. So Arctina is definitely an issue for this deck, and the main issue is the fact that they have a way to Oko your V-Stars in the form of their Giratina, and this deck doesn't have a way to just return Oko the Giratina, but with the Galarian Zapdos, it does have a way to Oko the Arceus V-Star, and that can kind of help mitigate the problem, but it doesn't necessarily fix the issue. But I believe that's where Espeon can come into play. And the reason why I say that is because, say, if you're going first, you set up your Arceus, and you set up an Espeon and an Umbreon, your opponent would then go set up their Arceus and, an Ar and a Giratina on the bench. So then on your turn, you would get your V-Star, you would attack, you'd build up your Espeon V, and then you'd probably use your Starbirth ability to grab Adventurer's Discovery. And then your opponent goes, they use the basic Arc V attack, building up their Tina V star, and then, or their Giratina V rather, and then at that point, they have 5 energy down, meaning that your Espeon V would do 5 times 6, which would be 300 damage, Allowing you to be able to Oko that Giratina. And you can get it up into the active spot by using your Umbreon. Or you can use the one of boss that you do have in the deck if you happen to have it in your hand. If you're going second, then obviously your opponent would go first. And then on your turn, you would probably try and aim to get two Arceus Vs. An Umbreon V and an Espeon V. And then get that energy onto your Arceus V attack and build up the Espeon. Your opponent would then go, going ahead and making the Arceus V-Star and the Giratina V-Star. And then at that point, they would attack, do the damage to your Arceus V. If they can't Oko it, then that's amazing. And then they would go ahead and build up their Giratina V. They would have 6 energy down, which is 360 damage. And then at that point, you could just manually retreat with the double color or the double turbo energy off of the Arceus V into your Espeon V Max, get your 
Arceus V Star, and then go ahead and you know that's how you would get your Espeon V Max um, and your Umbreon V Max. You can Umbreon, bring up the Giratina, and then attack for 360 damage, and that way you could then be up two prize cards essentially in each of those matchups. I think then the next step after that is to uh, work towards your Galarian Zapdos V to be able to hit the Arceus V Star for a one hit KO to then continue keeping up with the prize trade. And then after that, you can go ahead and focus on getting a two hit with the Umbreon, the Arceus, or the Espeon for the final two prizes that you would need in that matchup. So if you kind of work it to where you're attacking with the Arceus to set up the Espeon, then the Espeon goes ahead and goes and gets you a KO over the, the Giratina V star, and then you come back and hit with the Arceus to set up the Galarian Zapdos, or, yeah, the Galarian Zapdos V, and then you go in and hit with the Umbreon or the Arceus or whatever else you have left at your disposal at that point for attackers. So I definitely think that this deck is something that we you guys should definitely try if you want to have fun. And I definitely think that it has a very strong matchup spread over the meta currently. The only issue is obviously the Arceus Giratina. But let's go ahead and get into a game to showcase what this deck can do. And I will see you guys later. Against, say, a Lost Box deck or something of the meta variety. I do believe that I can make a short video explaining each of the matchups with this deck as well. If you guys would like that, feel free to let me know. So we do get the Arceus with an energy. Let's kind of hope that our opponent isn't playing Arceus because I really don't want to use this fighting energy. Ah, so we're going up against a damage spread deck. That is quite interesting. So I think that our best bet is to go Arceus V stars with, let's say, probably... S beyond V Max, V and V Max. So we do have both of those. No, I have to really worry about using the attack either. So we'll go ahead and place this down. And we're not worried about using Galarian Zapdos V either. So we'll go ahead and save this for the next turn. And we can grab our V Star. The V Star will grab the V Max. And also something else to probably grab ourselves quite a bit of quite a bit. Oh, we don't even need it for that. So we can place this down. That's actually great. That is actually great. So we're going to grab the VMAX. Why not, right? And we're going to Starbirth. Now, I think it's completely possible that we just grab Poncho to keep them from bossing that up. And Nest Ball. Or we could grab actually just grab research here I think that makes the most sense because that has damage counters meaning that Absol could do 120 damage double just 240 damage it only puts it at 250 but I still don't want it getting that close um, there's another Arceus 
place out there. Did I get rid of an energy somehow? Oh, I did. Oops. Oh, well. And... Yeah, we'll hit for 180. And we'll power up this Arceus. Wow, we are running... Quite low on energy in deck. We got one darkness energy left. Quite interesting. So I think he might be upset to know that this VMAX is going to stop all those damage counter shenanigans. He's playing the Galarian Moltres V. Raihan, okay. Put six damage on it. Interesting. Only does 30 and then it poisons. So it's not a whole lot. He does have another Absol. This is. Poisons the active. Sorry, buddy. SB on VMAX stops it, pal. So we're going to go ahead and place down this Arceus V-Star. And hit for 180. Um, no. We're not going to be attacking with the Espeon either, so there's no reason to put it on the Espeon. This is probably an energy, I would assume. There's, I called it right. Now we still have a Umbreon V. At this point, I'm not too worried, really. I mean, he can do 190 damage, and then also does 30 damage to himself, putting himself to 190, which is. It is just out of range. We would definitely need a... Well, at this point, we don't need the Umbreon VMAX. So I think we just... We already got rid of the belts. Well, that's upsetting. We could... Go ahead and judge here, actually. We'll just judge. Muses. Get... The third arc V down. We'll go ahead and retreat with the double colorless. Put this up. Attack for 200. Get the KO. Go ahead and grab the last energy out of the deck and we can place it on this Arceus. Go ahead and take our two prize cards. And now at this point we are, you know, up four prize cards. So, not too worried about what our opponent has left to offer us. So our opponent's getting some more stuff down. Just going to go ahead and Wallace. Sure, I, will, I would love to draw a card. Thank you, good sir. Now, I think if you're going to go damage spread, you should definitely go Miss Magius with the Lunala. Miss Magius allows you to spread out a whole bunch of damage. Lunala, Lunala allows you to then double it. It's pretty cool. Or you could also go the Lost Box with the Weavile, which is also a pretty fun way to play the deck. 
So we'll just go ahead and play that, I suppose. We don't really need anything else in the hand, so we're going to go ahead and do that. There's a Bidoof. Put down that Arceus. Go ahead and hit for 200. Take another prize card. And we win next turn, regardless. So Puts the 6 damage down. Which is quite rude. Quite rude of him to do that, but... I can understand. So what are we doing over here with this? Sorry, brother. It does it, it doesn't poison me. Espeon V Max too strong. GG's pal. So that was more of a fun deck, and this deck does exactly what it should do. So that was kind of a game to showcase the Espeon V Max. We'll get into another one and hopefully we'll get up against a better deck. So we're getting in on another game with the Arceus Binder Drop. Fortunately for our last opponent, Espeon did it what it was supposed to do. We will say that the two hardest matchups for this deck, I'd say Lugia is the second hardest when you compare it to... The first hardest being Arceus Tina, or spe more specifically Arceus decks that have attackers that can one hit. So, Arceus Tina, Arceus Dragonite. So we started an Energy, we started an Arceus. There's a Lugia. Okay. So against the Lugia. I would assume they're also playing the single strike. So we're not going to go Espeon in this matchup. We're going to go ahead. I don't fear getting knocked out. I think it just... Do we have the barrel in hand? We do have a barrel in hand, so we could go Bidoof. We don't really have to worry about putting down any Vs until next turn specifically. So this will just kind of ensure that we can get into it. We're going to attach the energy here. Go ahead and play the Choice Belt and pass turn. And see what our opponent has in store for us. So they're going to go ahead and Aroma, and they're going to flip a Heads, so I would assume probably grabbing the Archeops here, which would make sense. Makes all the sense in the world. And he grabs another Lugia. Read the win, get rid of uh, Archeops, and pass turn. So let's see what we can do. So we're going to go ahead and play down the Barrel. We don't really need those two cards. So we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves the Arceus V-Star. Now we can guarantee that we will find everything that we need this turn. Now he does have the V guard energy, which is quite annoying, I must say. I think we'll go ahead and judge first. Espeon. You probably put down the Umbreon. To ensure that it, we can use it as a boss. And then we'll go ahead and Bibarel. And draw three. So now we're getting a little bit closer to where we need to be. Go ahead and get the Flying Pikachu V. 
we'll have a way to get the V star or the V max next turn rather. And we can star birth. And I think it's smart to just grab the DTE, the choice belt. Now, I don't think we'll have <clears throat> the fighting energy. Like, uh, you know, I don't think it'll be a useful tool. This game outside of just being random fodder. We're not using the Espeon. Now, of course, we're going to hit for 180 here. Now, it is completely possible that we do place down the Espeon V. And we could finish off this Lugia V if they don't put it up into a V-Star. And if we time this Pikachu V max, then, so I think he's just going to try and boss stall us this turn. And there's a Tyranitar V max. Just going to go ahead and read the wind again. Gets rid of a Lugia V. That is unfortunate for our Lugia player here. We get the V max off top. Immaculate, immaculate, immaculate. We'll go ahead and place down this. Place down the Espeon V Max. Go ahead and research. We get the switch. We can go ahead and throw this up. Kind of just preventing the return boss KO. We can go ahead and play down the Espeon energy and hit for 350. Go ahead and take two prize cards. So now all we need is a double turbo. And we could attack with the Espeon second attack. So we can go ahead and put up the Tyranitar. Understandable. We can judge him next turn as well. So he gets the Tails, gets another basic. I know he was probably just looking forward to at least getting a uh, one Archaeops into play, but unfortunately he will not be able to get it with that capturing aroma. Gets the blue minion, so I would assume maybe a brunette, maybe even a research. Now, I would say that uh, Luminion could be played in this deck as well, but the thing that stops me is without committing one water energy to the deck, you don't necessarily have a way to just get it off of the board, um, which can be unfortunate from time to time. But... I think if we can get, so I think we've discarded the boss, so we just need to get the one of Umbreon VMAX, and we can pretty much wrap up this game. So. We're going to judge. That's unfortunate. We're going to place this down. We'll go ahead and draw two. Ultra Ball, that'll work. 
probably going to be saying GG's at this point. Get rid of the Galarian Zapdos V because we ain't even got an energy for it, so it's not useful. Go ahead and grab our Umbreon VMAX. Play it down. Hit for 380 damage. Boom. Take two more prizes. Leave our opponent in shambles and GG's Lugia. That wasn't the greatest showcase of the deck against Lugia, but I don't want the video to be too long. But you kind of get to see what the deck can do because the deck was working the way that it was intended to in that in both of those games rather so as you can see you have a pretty good plethora of blanket to handle most decks that you will come across on the ladder so i hope you guys enjoy the deck and i hope you guys go ahead and leave a comment down below if you like the deck what you would change and also let me know what you guys are playing and i will see you guys in the next live stream or video peace